Good morning, AI fans, and welcome back to theCUBE studio here in Palo Alto. This is special event coverage of our Super Cloud 5, the battle for AI supremacy coverage, both here from the studio and from AWS reInvent in Las Vegas. I am joined by my favorite, Lisa Martin. Good morning, sweetheart. Good morning. I'm great. The Super Cloud 5, the battle for AI supremacy. Does it get I, I any sexier it. than that? Me too. <laughs> I don't know if it gets sexier than AI supremacy. I don't think so. <laughs> At least for us ladies I think we've Silicon hit a pinnacle. Valley, we have really hit a pinnacle. We really have. And thank goodness we have a brilliant mind to join us, a CUBE veteran. He's been on the show multiple times over the last decade. Please welcome Balaji from Red Hat. Balaji, nice to see you. Nice to see you guys. Thank you for inviting us. It's been a whopping, what, 12 days since I saw you in I Chicago? So, yeah. <laughs> two, two times in a, in a month, I think that's pretty good. <laughs> I know, I'm feeling, I'm feeling great about it. We had, we had a really exciting conversation there. We actually talk, talked about uh, developer cognitive load, and I know that developer productivity is your sweet spot. Since the subject of the day is AI, how will AI impact developer productivity? I think uh, one of the biggest challenges, obviously, we talked about in, in, in Cubicon with Backstage, for example, is the ability to reduce the cognitive load. And the AI will go a long way in reducing that. Today, uh, just like with any other activity anybody a developer is doing, there's a lot of things that could help. Obviously, you have seen GitHub Copilot as one of the ways mm -hmm. to reduce the time to reduce the develop code. But there's also many, many, you know, if you look at the life cycle of a developer from starting writing a code to building to testing to deploying, monitoring, there's so many ways you can have AI to assist in improving their productivity. What do you think in terms of like a projection of productivity improvement that AI can actually deliver Ooh, to developers. Are we looking at incremental? Are we looking at like 10x? What What is that projection from your perspective? I think I think it'll be a multiple x, right? I'm not sure 10x, but definitely multiple x, because the amount of time that I think every you know, I guess I was talking to Savannah before, like, you know, the, we spend a lot of time doing things that are non-productive in, in general case. From a developer perspective, there's a, a f, you know, there's many things that, that could improve. I would say definitely multiple X, if not 10 X, right, for sure. I like that. I, are you using AI to come up with that number? <laughs> yeah, maybe I should, yeah. That's a valid question. You know, 7.8. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Perfect. I want to dig in there a little bit because when I was asking you in the green room earlier, I was saying, you know, there's a lot of hype around certain spaces that AI is going to touch, but the reality is it's going to touch a lot of the less sexy and more repetitive parts of our life that aren't getting as much hype. What are some of those areas? I know you're a man about productivity. How do you think AI is going to make our life at the office easier? Yeah, I think, uh, we, like we talked about, the the, the, today, most of the time, we are spending doing emails. I mean, most of the time is emails or chat, right, or, trying to yeah. find, <laughs> trying to find tribal knowledge of what's about everything is. How do I find this information? Well, you can go search for it. You know, it has improved the efficiency. It's improved in search. Before, it used to be very difficult, right? And now it has improved, but it's nowhere near getting things done. Like if I want to get a new badge, for example, I need to go to service now to open up a ticket and then do multiple back and forth. You know. I think AI would, has a lot to improve upon. I think email is one of the areas where oh, yeah. I think we are spending way too much time, even now. Even now, there's a lot of improvements there, but I think there's a lot, a lot more things to improve and meetings, multiple meetings, information, so much to improve there. Oh, the meeting front, you have me at meetings. <laughs> <laughs> or or the, the glut of. I, what, what are your thoughts? You know, AI has been around for so many years, but last year it got this massive injection from ChatGPT and it's been revolutionizing every business, every industry. What have you seen in the last 12 months in terms of really kind of that injection of AI and, and how do you think that this current acceleration of this wave that we're on is going to really help those multiples of productivity become a reality faster than you can imagine? Yeah, I mean, uh, my, uh, my undergraduate, it was on neural networks, right? So I, I used you to- You were ahead of the game. Yeah, no, I know I was, game. but I, I kind of left it because I'm like, it was so complicated to, to your point. <laughs> because back then, the, the, uh, the amount, of, no, amount of time it takes to build a model and, and get anything productive was hard. That's why I gave up and, and doing something else. But now with the, uh, with, the, with the foundational models and all the models that people are generating, and you have that base that you can build on. Now the only thing you have to do is to take your data, which is your differentiation in any organization, and then tween, tune the model to your business. That's a lot easier than having to you know, do from scratch and build it from, that's what I think is that um, platform that is now available in the last you know, few years 
that allows you that productivity gain. I think before that, people are struggling to get to that. How, not every company can get to it. Maybe a large company like Google and those people have the energy to build it up, but not every other. Now, it has become a sort of a commodity at that layer. Now you get that most, the X factor uh, from there. You know, you're reminding me of an analogy that I heard at the very beginning of the 3D printing revolution about letters and the internet. So when we first got computers and access mm -hmm. to the internet, we did something we knew how to do. We wrote letters mm -hmm. and we called it email yeah. and we did it faster. I think right now we're at a really interesting juncture where we're getting access to AI, where we're getting access to these LLMs and now getting to build on top of that. And I, I'm just thinking about it now in context of a chat GPT, you know, we got this AI model that we can all play with now and we're using it to do better search mm -hmm. that's kind of like a letter to email better <clears throat> search to x so i'm really curious just diving into that a little bit now that this developer productivity easy button is at least being pulled together not quite sure it's 100 percent built yet but you are a key player in that what do you think we're going to see more and more creation in 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 verticals or in apps or or where are we going to go now that people don't have to waste time building that first wheel yeah, I think I think the the innovation will be happening much more rapidly, right? I think you are, you know, we talked about a little bit earlier, is that the with the ability to generate auto generate common task in a, in, a, in a coding language, uh, you know, in your programming, then you can then focus only on the value added or the interesting or the intelligent portions of it, and that will basically means that the features that I have, I have a huge backlog. I'm a product manager, so I have a huge backlog of features I have to do in engineering. Obviously, saying, well, I'm going to take X amount of time to build it. But now, if they can fast forward those kind of mundane tasks into writing not only encoding but the end-to-end -end process, now they can get more features. The thing that I want to build, you know, vision, etc., can be much quicker. And if you, if you fast forward across every industry, you're going to see, I think, a tremendous boost across the productivity for the world, right? And basically, I think that will happen. Oh, that's a mic drop moment. Yeah, I was going to say, casual claim. For the world, I like that. I'd love to kind of dig into, there's obviously barriers to AI adoption. Where is Red Hat in helping customers go, okay, they're there, this is how we help you overcome those, so you can really become not just AI ready, but AI in production to drive those productivity improvements that we know are just right here. Yeah, so I mean, Red Hat is a you know obviously an open source based company, and we are a platform company. So one of the key things we are trying to do is to have a platform to build your new applications. So basically, how do you get the data, uh, you know, get it ingested, you know, the training, building the model, tr you know, deploying the model, and monitoring the model and lifecycle of the model, because models are not just one and done; it's always changing. And then um, that's on the model side of the house, right? And then you have the application that take advantage of the models, and you have, to, you, you have to do the life cycle of that. So essentially our job is to be, a, as a platform player, is to bring in, you can bring in your own open source model from wherever you want to bring in, bring in. We help you with the sort of the, the logistics of, you know, getting that into production and, and get, getting to that uh, benefit you're, you're looking for. We had an interesting discourse, and I love that you, you said this also as we were leading up to this. So, so you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago, languages, programming languages, were the differentiators for a developer getting a job. When we were chatting earlier, you said that natural language is now the most powerful language. What does that mean? Yeah, basically now, you know, for example, if I'm a Python developer, if I have to write in C++, whatever language it is, I can just ask uh, ChatGPT or Copilot to ask to convert it. Like, for example, uh, IBM, for example, is converting from COBOL to Java or, or some other thing. It's like, you know, you don't have to know the new language. You can just ask natural language. Can you convert it to go, uh, Java, please? Boom, you're done, right? That yeah. is, so natural language is now becoming a sort of a powerful language. By the way, I have to give credit to Satya Nadella, you know, Microsoft, you know, the, he was talking about it. So I totally get it, right? You know, now you can use the natural language to write better programming. I, mean, I think I still want to do, don't overhype it. You know, you still have to do the hard work, but I think it, you, you're going 80% there, right? You're getting 70, 80% there. You mentioned Satya Nadella, Microsoft, got to mention open AI and a lot of news and controversy. <laughs> You may have heard just a little bit <laughs> last yeah. week, a little that and, and Tom Turkey. But I'd love to get your <laughs> thoughts on the two most important things from last week, at least in the United States. Um, governance, compliance, AI regulation, what are your thoughts there on what's really going to be necessary to improve things like security, to help reduce hallucinations so that we can really depend on it? Yeah, a couple of things. One is having choice is very important. I think that's first first thing that you don't want to be dependent on one provider or one model. 
and then have any any of these kind of issues, which nobody saw it coming, I guess, but you could have, you should have probably seen it coming. I mean, that's sort of for the first order of business is to have that uh, multiple choices, you know, for the for the enterprises as well. You're and all about that multiple choice at Red Hat, aren't you? That's right. So, yeah. we, you know, we definitely allow you to bring in whatever models you want to bring in to, to develop that. And um, and then, then it, it creates a competition that you need to make sure that there is less of that factor. Right? If, you have, if you have one winner, it's, it's going to be difficult for them to change anything. But if you have multiple players competing for that thing, you can see, I think that the session before that, they were talking about different kinds of companies that are doing AI investments and new, new, new companies besides whatever we know already is common knowledge. That's helping to further tweak it. So I think, in a way, that's really useful to have competition and uh, has to have choices. And um, then the governing, the government also stepping in as well, right? Because this is a very, like I said, it's a productivity to the, for the humans, right? <laughs> to, to the world. Yeah, so it is not a, <laughs> it, is, yeah. it is not a trivial, it, it is it is impacting humankind. And so everybody has to be playing their part. What do you think is the biggest barrier as we move faster and faster than we ever have before towards that future? Is, what do you think is going to hold that back? Do you think it'll be the players, the governance, or do you think we're just going to be? I think I think uh, I feel like um, I feel like the momentum has shifted. I think what you see that that the dam has broken a little bit, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I think people are converging. Agreed. People are yeah. converging. People are going the right direction. I think there's a sense of two point security governance are already aware of it. Like if you're talking about crypto and all that, right? The whole drama we, you know we went through on on that is, is again maturity he will come. I think. This one is so fundamentally, you know, affecting everybody. I think the the convergence is happening much faster. I think if you Agreed. if you look at the AWS um, keynote today, you know, they talked about producing different choices for customers. So everybody is talking that same language, and I think it's the right thing because that's the you know if you if you look at previous other technology wave that happened, at the end of the day, that's what happened. It's the choices. It's the Self governance. Well, it's this push for standardization. It was a big conversation right. that we were having at supercomputing, as well as we were having at KubeCon. We all got to speak the same language if we're going to make natural language the most powerful language on top of <laughs> all this very complicated AI. So I, we also had a really fun conversation that I want to bring up, and I'm really thrilled to ask you this question. So when we think about, I mean, we were just at supercomputing. When we think about high performance computing, when we think about the machines and the models that AI is being built on, whether that be traditional or generative, one of the first things that always comes to mind for me is weather forecasting, it's climate mapping, it's looking at traditional uh, data on our planet, as well as satellite imagery around us. But that got me to thinking beyond space and about Aliens, Balaji, do you believe in aliens? I do. I mean, I mean, well, first of all, I don't know whether you know. I don't know the which form of aliens are existing in the world. I'm sure it may be something similar to us. Maybe not. I, don't, I have no idea. I always believe in Star Trek and how that uh, uh, how that came about. Uh, one episode where Jim Kirk goes to an alien planet and he sees a non-human form, it's like a some sort of wave or something. I'm like, wow. That was like you know, obviously way early in my life, but I could see that. Life would be in any form. So aliens, absolutely. We are too, the universe is too big to have nobody in there. I think so. the same. <laughs> I, I agree. It's just random, random things happening, and, and it's just too, too, we don't know even Earth, I guess, properly. So absolutely. Yeah. I love that. I, I, I think, I mean, I like to believe, why not? I mean, I believe in Santa, so I definitely believe Me in Me too. <laughs> He's almost here. I know. <laughs> I can't wait, counting the days. A AI, AI Santa, yeah. Yeah, AI Santa. <laughs> well, I wonder if, if, if artificial intelligence will allow us to sophisticate our lexicon in a way that lets us communicate across light years right. or across right. galaxies or in some very new <clears throat> and exciting yes. ways. Last question for you, and I know you can't give us the super details, there's some exciting news coming up this holiday season, this winter from Red Hat. What can you tell us? Yeah, I think for, for particularly for, for speaking for my own uh, space of product, I mean, obviously we talked about uh, at Backstage, you know, we're we obviously coming up with a commercial offering um, around uh, Backstage, uh, uh, internal developer platforms, right, uh, called the Developer Hub. And, you know, we are, we are closer to, you know, at some point releasing the very, very, very soon. And we have a lot of uh, you know great uh, enterprises you know excited and interested and you know want to use it. They're already giving us great feedback, and I think we're looking forward to you know uh, getting it out there and and uh, getting more adoption. So that's sort of my big thing in the next uh, you know few weeks, few months. Yeah. 
Oh, that's exciting. Last, okay, one more, just because we've now been on the on set together twice in the last two weeks. Yeah. Next time we sit down, what do you hope you can say that you can't say today? Well, we probably would have... Doesn't have to be the secrets. Could be anything about AI. Yeah, on the AI, I mean, I think, you know, we hope that we would have released whatever we were talking about and yeah. also be able yeah. to have some, <laughs> also be able to have some AI in there, right? Because at the end of the day, dollar productivity, we talked about how, um, how, how it can definitely improve everybody. Obviously, dollar products are very important. We um, focus on dollar productivity. Oh, yeah. I think AI within that product or within the, in that space, uh, partnership or otherwise, would make a huge difference for dollar products. And that's what I make. Hopefully, we can share more of that in the next time we talk. Well, I hope so too, Balaji. Thank you so much for all the work you do to reduce the cognitive burden that 76% of developers feel. Absolutely incredible work from Red Hat. Lisa Martin, always an absolute treat to share your presence. Likewise. And to talk a Super Cloud 5 with you. And thank you for tuning in to our four days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage from the Cube Studio here in Palo Alto, as well as from AWS reInvent in Las Vegas, Nevada. My name's Savannah Peterson, and you're watching the Cube, the leading source for cloud and generative AI coverage.